Windows logs. What? It's not just a text file. No, it is XML. It's broken into a binary circularly written database. The field names you see in your SIM may not be the same as the field names you see in Windows Event Viewer, which may not be the same fields you see if you look at them in an XML view. Today on 12 Days of Defense, we are going to break down Windows logs the channels you need to know, what gets written and what doesn't get written, and how to interpret and understand where that data is coming from. All right, so Windows logging. One of the things we need to know before we jump into Windows logging is where we set what will be logged in the first place. In a Active Directory environment, this is gonna be set by your domain administrators via a group policy object, but in your own PC or in a virtual machine, you can look at this in the secpol.msc. Just type start, run, type secpol.msc, and you'll be looking at this window. There is a basic audit policy up at the top here. We're not interested in that because we're security people. We are trying to get advanced. And in the advanced policies, we have all sorts of good stuff. We can go through and tell Windows exactly what we want to log, whether it is a success or a failure. If we're not sure what's going to be logged, we can click on the Explain tab. There is awesome stuff built into Windows, such as saying anytime any single file or folder is touched or written to or read, not all of them, you wouldn't want to do that, but you can turn on the ability to do that for individual files or individual registry keys. This would be able to tell you if someone is touching sensitive files, if they're modifying startup keys in the registry, it would write an event into the Windows log that you could pick up, centralize, and send to your SIM. There are options for picking up plug and play activity for USB devices. There are options for logging process creation built into Windows. And so all of these are great ways to set exactly what you want to happen in the first place. Then the next question is, well, how do these things get logged? Well, when these individual events occur, there is a service that is run. If you open up services.msc, you can see it. And down at the bottom, there is literally a Windows event log service. And as long as this service is running, which it always should be when Windows is running, it's receiving logs from the operating system and it's putting them into Windows log channels. If you go and you open up your Windows event viewer, and you look on the left side here, this is where the channels show up. Some logs will go into your application channel if it's being written by an application. Some logs will go into your security channel. Some will go into your system channel. And these are the ones that are most commonly picked up, but there are way, way more logs than this. If you unfold application and services logs and then unfold Microsoft and then unfold Windows, whoa, there are a ton more, right? This is where you have to go if you want to have a full, instrumented, well-working log collection strategy. Not all of these things need to be picked up, but there are certain key items. Do you have AppLocker turned on? Do you want to know when someone runs an application that doesn't match your AppLocker policy? It's not in the security log. It's in the AppLocker log. And in here, if it's an executable or a DLL, it will show up there. If you want to log, let's see what else we might want to find here. Uh, there is security mitigations, kernel mode. Are you interested in what happens with Windows Exploit Guard? This is where you find that information. If you have Sysmon installed, there is a Sysmon channel. If you don't know what Sysmon is, go Google it. Sysmon is an extra tool uh, that will log process creation in lots of detail and, and much, much more. Uh, Windows Defender. You want to know when you get a virus? If you don't have Windows Defender ATP, you're not going to know about it unless you pick up this log channel, right? Now, I keep saying that. What do I mean by that? If you have a SIM, if you have Splunk, for example, or you have QRadar, you have the Elastic Stack, all of them have an agent that needs to go on all of the endpoints. Most of the time, that's how it's set up. There are other ways. We're ignoring those for now. You have to tell your agent, these are the individual channels I want to pick up. So it's conceivable you could have a SIM and you could tell your SIM's agent, just pick up security and system and application and totally miss all of this other stuff, which means you're not gonna know when there's a virus infection. You're not going to know when the firewall policies change. You're not gonna know when Sysmon picks things up. You are not going to know about exploit guard. You're not gonna know about PowerShell events, another key one there. Obviously, you need to know about these things. And so step one in winning in Windows logs is make sure you have the right channels. 
go out and Google the best practice on this. Microsoft has awesome guidance and they can give you suggestions for audit policies as well. And there's plenty of other places you can go for this. The next thing I wanna cover real quick on this video is the format of Windows logs. They are written into an EVTX file and an EVTX file exists for every single channel in Windows. If you go to C Windows System 32, Win EVT and Logs, that is by default where all of these items are stored. These are not normal text files. You can't just double click them and open them, which is why you have to read them in something like Event Viewer. What is inside of these is a binary format, circularly written, crazy database that you have to have a special program to interpret. It's done that way for performance and integrity reasons, but we have to have some kind of special program to read them, unlike Linux, which just is syslog written to a text file in many cases. You can see this nature of Windows logs. Let's say we're looking at a logon event here, a 4624. You should be familiar with that one. This is one form of a Windows log. This is the human readable, easy to interpret in some respects version of what is written in that EVTX file. But if you want to go underneath the hood and kind of see the detail, of course you have to click the details tab. Then you need to go to the XML view. And this is what is actually being recorded right here. If we look into the XML view, if I fold this up, there is an event there are two sections. There's the system section in which all of the fields will be the same across the events. And then there is the event data section in which all of these fields will be different depending on the event ID. Every event ID has a unique set of fields in this section here. If I click on 4719, you'll see it's way different down here, but this part stays the same. So it's important to know that to uniquely identify an event in a Windows log. You need to know both the channel name and the event ID. Within that event ID, it is actually a bunch of perfectly parsed XML fields. These things are being written in XML in a format that you can't just directly read unless you have a program that's reading them for you, like Windows Event Viewer. But it's not only Windows Event Viewer. There are third-party options, and you can also read this to PowerShell, which brings me to my final step of this video. You can open PowerShell and open it as an administrator, right click. And you can use what is called a commandlet, git win event. And git win event will read an EVTX file and print these things out to the screen in PowerShell objects, which lets you do some interesting stuff. What we can do with this is type something like git win event and give it a parameter of log name security. And then boom, here's all our events being spit out. We have the date, we have an ID, we have the level, and then we have a little bit of the message over here. Now this in of, in of itself is not super useful, but we can take this and we can filter it down, but we have to be a little bit fancy to do it. If you want to see, let's say, only the 4624s, you have to use the filter hash table argument, and then you put an at sign, and then you start some brackets, and then you say log name, equals security com, oh, semicolon ID equals 4624. So it's largely the same thing we're saying above, log name is security, but we're also in this case specifying ID, and that is the name of this column here. And so we're saying only show us those events. And so if I hit enter on this, now we're only seeing 4624s. But we still can't read these events. And so if you want to get the full content of this, you can pipe this to format list. And that will give you every single event's full message in that human readable format, right? There are other options. You can pipe it out to OGV, which is an alias for out grid view. If you do that, it will pop it up in this little box. Unfortunately, you can't see the entire thing. So that's a better move when you have shorter uh, events that are easier to read like app locker events and things like that. You can get much trickier than this as well. I'll give you one final tip on PowerShell commandlets, something I thought was really, really interesting when playing around with this the other day. Let's say you want to see all of the fields for a particular event ID, all of the fields as in every single thing that might be in this XML view over here, and you wanna do it via PowerShell. Here is a set of commands that you can use to do it. We can use the git win event with the 
list provider parameter and then list Microsoft Windows security auditing, which is basically saying use git win event to grab all of the stuff that could be written in the security log and put it in a variable called provider. You don't actually have to do it this way, but the command is really ugly if I do it all at once. Then second command, I'm going to use this command right here and say, take my variable and the events property and select all of the items where the ID equals 4624. And then within that, I want to select ID, template and description. And here's what comes out of that. This is a list, a generic, not filled out list of what you would see in a 4624 event in the XML view. So I just had it print the ID there so we knew what we were looking at. And then we have this template here and it says subject user SID, subject user name, subject domain name. Those are the things that you see in the Windows event view when you go to a 4624 up here. Subject user SID, username, domain name. And they are listed in an order that we could count from top to bottom with numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, let's pretend they're labeled like that. Beneath this, in this description section, there are numbers, and that is where those numbers get filled out with data items. So security ID percent one is telling us that if we go up to this template, the subject user SID is going to be filled in right here. Account name is going to get filled in with the subject username. And this brings me to something that confused me for a while about Windows logs, which is why I wanted to point this out in a video. When you collect Windows logs with your SIM, your SIM's agent will be reading this data in XML form. And it's going to be pulling it back and saying, ah, here's the subject user SID, right? And it might pull it into your SIM and call it that. But it also could look at this view and call it something like security ID. But this is the same field. Security ID is the first thing in the list. And it's called subject user SID here. This says S1518. This says system. What's going on here? This is a security identifier that's being resolved. And so S1518 is going to be a system account. That's just a well-known security identifier. That's a different thing to Google. Why I'm saying this, as a new analyst, I would see logs that were pulled in from a SIMS agent. And sometimes they would be labeled like this. Sometimes they would be labeled and look like this. And it's hard to know exactly where these fields are coming from if you don't know that there are two different versions of Windows logs and that those versions are basically consisting of a template that is nice and human readable being filled out with data that has a different name behind the scenes. And so this is a really illuminating thing that helped me understand what was really happening in Windows logs. And so basically there's a program that fills out this template. The template goes into this description and then the description and the template with the template names may go to your SIM. And then your SIM may take its common information model and rename things again. And so that's why I wanted to point out this sort of confusing method that Windows uses to keep things organized, but also may change the names and throw you off the trail. So hopefully that was a useful thing for you. Windows logs are great. They're awesome. They're pre-parsed. They're broken into channels for you. Much cleaner and easier to work with than Linux logs, but you have to understand how they are laid out and the fact that there are multiple channels and that you have to pick up more channels than just these ones up here. So there you go. Windows logs in a nutshell. So again, I hope this info was useful to you. Uh, understanding Windows logs is one of the core parts of being a good SOC analyst. And so it all starts with understanding what is your audit policy? What are you even recording in the first place from what's being recorded on the endpoint? What is your agent actually picking up and sending into your SIM? And then as it gets sent into the SIM, what's going to happen to that data? Is it changing names or anything like that? So if this video was helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you could hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to hear about the next episodes and help me get the word out by telling a friend. Catch you all on the next episode of 12 Days of Defense.